How much do materials shrink? In this video, I'm going to be testing four different materials and try to answer that question. I'm Ski from Studio Space Dust and let's get cracking. Plastic City suggests ABS shrinks 0.6%. Some very old threads from nine years ago suggest 1.5 to 2.5%. Filament to print.com from 0.7 to 1.6, ASA 0.4 to 0.7, 3D for create 0.4 to 0.9% for ABS, while Bing is going to say it's up to 11% with around 2% increase in size often used among hobbyist makers. So if we have learned something is that there just isn't any definitive answer. And believe it or not, I couldn't find any information about ABS plus because that's what we're gonna be testing today. We're going to be testing two ABS plus filaments, one ASA plus filament and one regular ASA filament. Ultrafuse ABS Fusion Plus, natural color. This filament is made by BASF and uh, I really like this filament a lot. I almost finished two spools of it and uh, my only regret is that they don't make bigger spools for it. And you know, it's uh, not exactly very cheap, but I think for the quality of what you get, this is really good filament. Titan X, natural color. This filament is by Form Futura and it's also ABS plus type of filament. And on the paper, its qualities are even better than ABS plus by BASF. So I am super excited to try it out. I got this, um, this is 2.3 kilograms pool. I was hopeful I can somehow use it in my uh, Prusa's enclosure, but no chance. So I'll have to respool this one. And uh, if you buy bigger spools, it's uh, obviously a little bit cheaper. So it's cheaper and on the paper, it's a little bit better. So let's see how it prints. Just a quick color comparison. Both are natural colored ABS plus type of filaments. Apollo X dark blue. This filament is by Form Futura. Apollo X is basically ASA plus. So it should print better than Ultrafuse ASA. It should warp less. Ultrafuse ASA black. This is another filament from BASF from their engineering grade filament series. I used this filament for a few prints and I did encounter some warping. But keep in mind this is not ASA plus, this is normal ASA. Here are what I call shrinkage calibrators. For each material, I'm going to print three of these. One for X, one for Y, and one for Z axis. These tools are of my own design. They include small little details that came along the iteration of testing. And all this is just to maximize the accuracy of measurement. I'm gonna use just a regular caliper to measure values from 15 all the way to 150 millimeters. I have also included um, custom brim as I call. So these little ends at each calibrator are just to help prevent warpage if any. And after printing, they are designed so they are very easy to snap off. And there you go, simple clean design. So here we have the results. On the left, we have ABS Fusion Plus. On the right, we have Titan X, both ABS Plus type filaments. And here you have a shrinkage for X axis, this is Y axis, and this is Z axis. Um, all the measurements were taken into account when coming up with these values. So these are the, in this column I've input my measured values, compare them against modeled values, and these are the differences. And these how, uh, and this is how these differences reflect in terms of percentage. So in some cases, when I measured, the reading actually turned out more than the model, so a bit of expansion. But then you can see that models actually shrink a little bit. And uh, overall, the total of X, Y, and Z, I'm getting 0.33 for ABS Fusion Plus and Titan X 0.3%. So this is less what I initially compensated when I was reprinting my Prus MK4 parts with this filament. And these two results are for ASA. On the left, we have Form Futura Polo X. So this is ASA plus type of material. On the right, we have normal ASA. And the Polo X shrinkage is the smallest out of all the materials tested here. So ASA is 0.3 and ASA plus 0.25 only. 
So it's actually a very interesting filament because um, nozzle temperature and bed temperature is probably probably even less than some PETG type of filaments, which is very surprising and it printed out well. I didn't use any fan for this one. So here, I just want to demonstrate how to take the reading. So let's say 60, yeah? This is the value that uh, it's modeled in 3D model. And let's see how much it is after 3D printing. So I push my thumb kind of diagonally up. Make sure that the top of caliper is also aligned perpendicularly. But it's very easy to do. That's why I made this specific size so that it's comfortable to hold in your arm. And uh, yeah, the reading is 59.87. I will not apply any force. 59.87, again, 59.87. I will not apply force because I will not be able to apply same amount of force for each step. That's why this calibrator is designed the way it is designed so that you don't need to apply any force to take the reading. So you see, 4494, 4494, 4494. So this white residue on the bottom of ASA print is also very easy to remove with just some sort of uh, heat gun. As you can see, boom, gone. Easy, easy peasy. Just don't keep the heat gun for too long in one place. Now for the end, I just want to compare these materials a little bit. So first, black is ASA, regular one by BASF, and the blue one is Form Futura a ASA+. Plus. Um, between these two, if I had to choose one, like just purely visual and feel-wise, ASA would be the winner. Unfortunately, I cannot print it without warping uh, with Prusa MK4. You probably need active, actively heated chamber for that, but I couldn't get more than 36 uh, degrees in my uh, enclosure, so that wasn't sufficient. But the good bit is that, yeah, you can go just with ASA+. Plus. Um, so that will have to do for now. And the blue color is really, really nice. I like it. So maybe a little bit more glossy than ASA, I would say. So there you go. These are two ASAs. And these two are both ABS pluses. So this one is by BASF. And this one is by Form Futura. I would say BASF's ABS Plus warps just a little bit, very little. Form Futura, I did not encounter warping, but again, aesthetic wise, like feel wise, I don't know if you can pick that up on camera, but ABS Plus by BASF looks better and feels better. It feels kind of, I don't know, more like more real engineering material. It's uh, less glossy. This one is a bit more glossy, but prints easier. So both are really good. I use this one to reprint my MK4 parts and I'm glad. I'm sure this will do the job equally as well. So I'll do more testing on these later. So not saying that either is better than the other one, but just saying purely from visual point of view, I personally prefer this one, but you know, maybe you probably can't even tell that much of difference. Can you? Anyways, thank you for watching this video, guys. Uh, I know it's not the most fun video to watch. It's about shrinkage, so you know, how fun can it be? But either way, if you wanna download files for these calibrators together with the Google Docs uh, table, uh, the link for that will be provided in the description of the video. So keep printing and thank you for watching. Some of you will maybe say, why didn't you design a tool where with one print you can measure X, Y, and Z values? Well, that's how I actually started. I designed something like this, but problem with this type of design is that it's kind of, you know, flimsy a bit. So it's hard to take a good reading, good quality reading. It's hard to position your caliper so that if you measure it second time, you get the uh, same reading. So 54.64, if I move it a bit, you see a different value. 
then I'm also struggling to get enough of uh, data points to provide a decent reading. So yeah, I tried guys, but I don't think this is reliable, unfortunately. Then as a second round, I also tried something like this. So in an ideal world, you know, you position your caliper, something like this. So that supposedly should help you get the good reading too. But it kind of, I kind of think it's also not as accurate because the caliper then is also wobbling. So, however, I tried to design these calibrators. Um, so, simple design, I think, just works the best. So, these type of steps, I found the best design. And you know what? The added benefit is that you can just join it in a very nice rectangular from two of these calibrators in the end. And I'm sure I'm going to be able to reuse them at some sort of DIY project later. Maybe you'll see that in some other videos. I have some ideas, but I'm definitely not wasting these. Uh, you know, in the worst case, this is just a very nice color swatch to have. So you can see how your colors look when you, uh, you know, put them together. Um, it kind of gives you this nice pattern, I would say. So you can take different colors, try different color combinations. Yeah, you name it, simple design.